Welcome back to the Jörn YouTube channel. Um, today I want to talk about lightweight design. Lightweight design of spherical joints or molecular joints. However you want to call it, I will come back to that a little bit later. What is the meaning of lightweight design? I mean, lightweight design means, of course, reduction of weight. And that, of course, is a significant contributor to sustainability. Because each kilogram you don't have to move means, of course, safe of fuel consumption and, of course, of uh, uh, CO2 emissions. And um, the joints I want to talk about are used in links, in V-links, as well as in four-point links. You find many of those in a chassis of a truck, train and so far. Okay, we talk about spherical joints. I mean, I've, I've just explained that uh, in which kind of parts uh, these joints are used, in a chassis, of a train, of a truck, of an agricultural machine and so far. And what is it about? I mean, if you look at a spherical joint, it looks like a bush, a rubber bush, a rubber metal bush. It has a pin in the middle and a little bit rubber and um, well to, to, to get the function a little bit better I will take the pin separately to explain to you. I mean you see the pin is, is, is metal and well with a little bit of fantasy you can identify this as a, as a spherical uh, contour okay and um, then we have a rubber around and with some other two metal rings here from, from both sides we can design a rubber sheet which is similar to a, a semi half shell of a, of, a, uh, of a ball. And that provides a rubber um, structure which is able to, to bear very good conical loads as well as very high axial loads and of course which standard radial loads and rotating. This is what the parts are designed for. <coughs> you can have this design with these two rings here and it also uh, is um, designed around which is, looks more like a bush with two uh, metal half shafts here around and this is then uh, pre-stressed in uh, assembly in radial direction while this standard part is pre-stressed, pre in, in pre-tensioned by in, in actual direction. And the very interesting thing is that uh, history comes back. I mean, this type of joint was initially invented by the founder of the Jörn company, by Mr. Raoul Jörn, back in the 60s. And then he granted some licenses to, to a business partner uh, who then um, produced that in a wide range of, of variants and brought it into the market. <clears throat> well, I was talking about lightweight design. I mean, why is that? Um, remembering the pin and the part, you can easily see that this part is mainly consisting of steel. However, the steel is not required everywhere. In some areas, it's only required to fill the contour, so to speak, to provide geometry. And this is not necessarily needed for the mechanical stability. So and this is the area where we started working on. Okay, and what did we achieve? We achieved a significant reduction of the weight. How much is it? Let's, let's put the part on the scale. Let's see. So that's the original part. And the weight is about 2836 grams. Now let's have a look for the... Ah! Much lighter, very easy. So this one is 1,833 grams. So it's more than one kilogram less. So more than a third less. And that's, I believe, a significant weight reduction. Well, <coughs> just give you some, some more uh, mechanical requirements, some details. The diameter, the fitting diameter of this part is about 90 millimeters. And the distance between these two holes is 130 millimeters. And this part is originally designed for a radial load, of oscillating load, of course, of uh, around 100 kilonewtons. Actual load, 20 kilonewtons. Um, rotating angle plus and minus 12 degrees. 
conical angle plus and minus eight degrees. Um, question now is, does this part also achieve the same mechanical uh, properties as the original one? Well, we want to measure. Let's find out. Um, our target is to apply an actual load of 50 kilonewtons, of course, to both variants and to see whether there's any difference. So, therefore, I need to um, assemble the, the spherical joint into the fitting room and uh, get it onto the testing machine. So, let's see. I will take the original part first, put it here into the fitting room. Then we apply a ring. Next step would be applying pressure here on it and uh, to fix it with the with this kind of, of uh, device. However, I don't want to do that right now because the focus of this video is not on assembling a part, not mounting a part, but on the mechanic properties. So now let's get, get on to the testing machine and see what the result is going to be. So here you see our testing machine. We have in, on, on the right side the machine itself with the part in the middle and we have a stamp uh, with, a, with a power unit, power measure unit here on the upper side and we measure the displacement with a pin here directly on, on the part. Um, unfortunately you can't see much because the deflection is, is very very small even though the force is high. You can see on the right, on the left side, sorry, on the left side you can see the diagram where the force is um, measured via the, the displacement and you can see we are at 40 kilonewtons now and we have about one millimeter displacement that really is not much. First version is the heavy version. So next is the lightweight design version. Uh, the picture of the testing machine is, looks very very similar, um, almost identical and again the movement is, is not visible because of the small displacement of the part. On the left hand side again you can see the diagram and uh, you see the characteristic of the curve, how the increase of the force is going to be and um, how the, the progress on the deflection is. Um, you see that the characteristic itself is pretty similar to the previous one, um, even though it's slightly softer on the part, but that's just due to a different uh, rubber mixture. And uh, on the linearity of the graph you can identify that there's no crack, no slide, nothing. So it works pretty well up to 50 kilonewtons. Okay, well we are back in the uh, shop floor room and you could clearly see that the lightweight version behaves under the testing machine exactly like the other and is clearly within the tolerance range of, of the drawing on part where it should be. So from the mechanic point of view it's um, Good success. And again, just to remind you, a third weight, third uh, less weight, one kilogram less. So, mechanical properties, all right. Assembly, all right. Now the question is about the cost. How much would it cost you? But before I want to talk about cost, I want to talk about benefits. I mean, saving weight is clearly a benefit in terms of sustainability. Each kilogram you can take out of a vehicle, out of a moving uh, device, um, will save a significant amount of CO2 emissions as well as fuel consumption. I mean it's very difficult to, to find a uh, reasonable value for that, but uh, I was searching, I was investigating a little bit and I found something for a truck who's uh, on, the, on the delivery truck and on the, on the auto, for, the, for the autobahn goes about uh, 100,000 miles a year or so far, something like that. Um, the, fuel, uh, the, the CO2 emission would go down by about four to six kilograms per year. Um, I mean that, that's a lot considering it's just one kilogram weight safe uh, for a truck. And of course this um, reduction of CO2 emissions is also means also a reduction of fuel consumption which saves money. And that's I mean that that's not that's not a new hydrogen engine but it's a contribution to sustainability and it's something which is a 
it's quick saving and uh, for for sustainability. It's uh, available just uh, very very soon, very quickly. We can introduce that um, in the near future. Okay, uh, you see, I try to talk around the cost, but okay, at the end of the day, let's talk about the money. I found another value, but this is uh, a value more than 10 years old. I found a value of three to five euros per kilogram weight saving, which uh, the customers were willing to pay. And considering the overall uh, price increase since that time, that would mean today's uh, value of uh, four to six euros per kilogram. But the good news is this design is on the same level of cost as the other one, as the old one. I mean, that's, that's great, isn't it? Um, there's only the efforts to cover for development and testing and, of course, for some tools which are required. That's it. But the piece price is on a similar level. I mean, that, that depends on some details, on some details of the design, of course. So that's why I can't uh, precisely promise that it's exactly on the same level. But it's about the same and it's definitely not four to five euros per part. Well, even that sounds like magic, we can't do magic. I mean, it's engineering. Uh, and if you're curious and if you want to know more about the details, how we're going to do that, how we can do that, please contact us. We have established an, an email uh, address for that, and that's called lightweight.design at yearn, J O E R N minus G M B H dot com. Or send us an email or contact us via all the other contact channels which you can find down in the contact box. Okay? Today I'm at the end for this video. I want to say thank you very much. I hope you liked what you've seen. If so, please leave us a, a like and uh, subscribe for the channel. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you again when it's, uh, when it's called when said. Welcome back to the Young Europe uh, YouTube channel. I want to say thank you very much for your attention. And of course, again, thank you very much to my colleague Michael Schiebel, the man behind the camera and who is doing the, the cutting of, of the movie later on. Thank you very much. Bye bye.